Everyone can see my screen, right? Yes, yes, no. Yes. All right, perfect. So this is the foundation of what we want to learn today. All right, when we talk about Scrum or when we talk about Agile, what is Agile all about? Agile, it's a way, it's a mindset, it's a thinking. Agile is customer focus. We want to pay attention to the customer. And because we want to pay attention to the customer, they, they say, oh, whoa, there's a way if we, we do it this way, it's going to be customer centric. So because of the way we want to do things, what happened? There are now many frameworks. There are now many approaches that comes in and suggest that this is the best approach to serve our customers. And someone say, okay, what if we have a very last solution. We're not just talking about one customer. How do we do it? Someone say, okay, let's scale it up. Let's go safe. So the basic difference between safe and Scrum is just also the cycle of implementation. Why Scrum is going to focus on the, just one or two things delivering a product. Safe is going to focus on a whole complex team of about 25 to 150 people working on the same product. So what kind of separate both is just a complexity. Now, if we're focusing on the customer, the reason why adaptability is very important is that you we agree with me that human beings are very spontaneous in their behavior, right? I can be very happy right now and I see a car coming in and out of a sudden my countenance change in less than a minute. So it means that for us to effectively serve human, we need to adapt because our ideas are changing, the world is changing, life is happening to us and then things are changing. So we need to constantly adapt. Right. As we need to constantly adapt, what happened, it means that there need to be a very high sense of responsibility of ownership. Now, if someone doesn't accept that, I'm going to pay attention and follow up with this person. Everyone is going to assume that someone else is doing that and someone else is going to assume that somebody is doing that at the end of the day. Nobody does that. So what happened? For us to be effective in dealing with things that are changing constantly, we need people to be responsible and to own up in order to do that. And why do we need to pay attention to things that are changing? Because we want to become better. So that's the whole concept of Agile. Agile is about being flexible. Agile is about adapting to constant change. Agile is about taking ownership. I just about we continuously improving the situation. So if we understand agile as flexibility, the question you ask yourself is, are you agile? Now, because we are focusing more on the industrial perspective, we want to look at how we can implement agile from a product standpoint. When we talk about a product standpoint, if we talk about a customer, it means we want to serve the customer, right? And it means we want to serve the customer something, which is a product. All right. Now, it's also a big shift from a project to a product. Why is there that shift? In a project, what the customer wants is the product in the project, right? Not the whole, the product includes, but the one, something that needs to be delivered. So we try as much as possible to take out what is not really the main concern of the customer, and then we focus on what is the main concern, which is the product. And that's why you hear the shift from project base to product base. It simply just reduces the scope and say, look, when we talk about project, we need to talk about the budget, we need to talk about the timeline, a whole lot of things that now 
sometimes doesn't really pay so much attention on what we want to deliver to the client. And we've paid so much attention on the protocols and the money and every stuff. So let's take out the money part. Let's take out the home management part. Let's focus on the product. Why? Because our goal is to satisfy the client with the product. So we said, okay, we're shifting away from pro project base to product base. So what's the difference between product base and project base? Project, we're focusing on timeline. Product, we're focusing on the value, right? So I wanted to give a typical example. Let's look at this iPhone. Let's treat this iPhone as a product. If I'm cleaning as a product, the first thing is that I want to define who is, who is using this iPhone. So if I'm buying this iPhone for my wife, for instance, I probably will be looking at something rose, pink, woman color or so, right? Which means I'm paying attention to the user product. If I have a project to buy an iPhone, I'm paying attention to the money and the time I need to raise the money. You see the shift that's happening? Just by us shifting from a project to a product, the attention changes. And that is why Agile focus on product delivery, which is why it is customer centric. So along the line, we're gonna learn a lot about uh, uh, user stories, about uh, dealing with customers, about dealing with stakeholders, because we're talking about product and when we're talking about product, someone need a product. Let's talk about product for women. And women say product, I have product for your hair, product for your eyes, product for your hands and so many products. Now you realize that every product is meeting a specific need and it even changes with season. Let's say that we had a project and the project was to buy cosmetic for women. What are we gonna do? Buy anything that we want to buy within the time frame without thinking about the specific need. Now, not that we're not think about that, we're not pay so much detail attention, right? So we're not pay so much detail on satisfaction. So if, if can, can everybody mute? Please mute your mic. If not, I'm going to mute everybody then. If you want to talk to you, I think that's going to be the best way. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to mute everybody. And then if you want to talk, just raise your hand up and I'm going to unmute you then. What's even that? Mute everybody. Okay, right here. All right, perfect. So, for us to effectively deliver the product to our client, what do we need to do? We need to have effective planning. Effective planning means we need to know detail about who need it, when they need it, and what is the timeline. We pay so much attention to the user. Now, one of the stuff, especially with Agile, is the fact that since we are not focusing on deadline, we are focusing on delivering a working testable product, which means we can deliver in small part as much as possible. So long as it is meeting the need of the client, we can deliver in increment. That's what we talk about delivering in increment. And based because we are constantly communicating with our client all the time, what is gonna happen at that point? Because of constant communication, we can continuously improve, right? The reason we are able to build better relationship is because we communicate with our partner and then we see where we, we, we go wrong and then we try to improve it. If you con someone constantly uh, tell you where you're going wrong and you don't improve it, what happened? You can build a sustainable relationship. So one of the questions they're gonna ask you on your interview is that, how do you build a performing team? By paying attention to the need of your team, by talking to them, you build a solid relationship. When you can communicate with the next person, then you're good to work with them. All right, now, making Agile work for company. 
All right, this is this all of this part of what I'm improvising just to help you understand the concept before we go into some specific aspect. The reason why Agile is not working for many companies and the reason why you're going to face that, I have uh, one of my students who got a job and after about one month, the manager called her and said, okay, uh, and, uh, apart from you facilitating meeting, why am I paying you? Can you give me a reason why I'm paying you? <laughs> so, <laughs> so now, because you're going to face that, the reason why these days they're saying, oh, we need a technical Scrum Master. We need a Scrum Master that can also write you user story. We need a Scrum Master that can, because they kind of feel like the Scrum Master don't really have work. But the reason they feel that is because we are not paying so much attention to look at how we can add value. So when we talk, all we talk about is facilitating meaning and they're not seeing any extra value. So they feel like they need to give Scrum Masters extra work. Extra work so that it can stay busy, right? But then if you understand your role as a Scrum Master in the entire company is to be able to identify where you can fit in in the entire framework, then you realize that you have a lot of work and you're going to bring a lot of value to your company. So in any case, which is what we call the 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 the, the uh, change management model by Kota. It's a whole book on its own. So for those who like to read a uh, read leadership book, it's called change management. So what does the concept talk about? If there is no urgency, there is no need to change. So if you get into a team, it's a situational question you come across. You get into a team and you realize that Nobody's paying attention to Agile. They don't want Agile. Agile doesn't work for them. And you're joining that team as a Scrum Master. What are you going to do? All right. This is where your leadership ability comes in. What are you going to do? The only reason they're not looking forward to do a shift because there is no need. So what you do? You create a need. How do you create a need? By helping someone see the value, not helping someone see the need to attend meeting. What is the value? What are we talking about here? Okay, let's let's, let's have a conversation. Why are we why don't we don't want to attend uh, uh, scrum meetings and events like oh they just meeting meetings they, they don't really add so much value we can walk the way we've been walking. All right, that's fine, but let's look at what are we trying to deliver here. We're trying to build a software that will help our customer easily send out their billing, okay? And how well do you want your customer to be certified? Oh, we want them to be really, really certified. Is there an important need to showcase what we are doing to the customer at the end of the week to get their feedback? Would that be something that you would like to see happen? Yes, okay. So why don't we want to meet in order to let that happen? Oh, we can just meet with them. What if we meet with them and we realize that we have a very huge mistake that is going to cost us business? So your goal is to guide change, not to tell them what to do. How do you guide change? Asking question. They have the answer. They deliberately don't just want to think. So your goal is to get in, being able to create an uh, urgency, ask questions along the way, and help them understand the reason why this is very important. So when next you are asking an interview, if someone is not attending an event, don't say that you will tell them how important it is. It is agile. If you don't do this, you're not practicing agile. No, it's about value. What value is it going to contribute to us doing X, Y, Z? If we can see value, it doesn't have any need. And because Agile is customer-based and the need of the customer are constantly changing, we cannot run it this way with traditional run project, right? If not, we are not incorporating the changes and we are not focusing on building value as needed. So in that case, we should not be talking about Agile if you're not willing to add value to your customer. You're not required to know this, 
I just brought this in for explanation so that you can better understand. Now, the reason I'm also going to talk about some of the stuff that are not in here is because for you to beat the market today, you need to have a very high competitive advantage. You need to know what other people don't know so that when you talk, they can see the difference, right? So that's the reason. Now, 10 things to do to become truly agile. Uh, focus on, this is not part of the exams. This is just for you to understand why we're talking about agile. You need to focus on business model, on value. Let's talk about value. Guys, this, this value aspect is going to help you break through so many questions. Someone asked me a question a couple of days ago, like, okay, uh, if you're working in the government sector and you have people that are not software-based because uh, they have the agile team, the agile teams are doing well, but you have those who are traditionally on the operation, they don't want to hear about agile. How are you going to convince them to join agile? Now, probably I will start explaining that, you know, agile is a very good way, agile, no. What's the value we're talking about? Let's bring the value of what they have in place. Let's bring the value of what Agile is offering in place. Let's have a conversation about the value. And let's rule out what we need to rule and keep what we need to keep. There's definitely no need me convincing you. We want to look at the value that we're going to create by implementing both approach. We want to weigh the value and see which one gives more value to our customer. And we can see that definitely will go with the one that gives more value. And Agile, without any doubt, deliver the value we need as a company. Why? Because it's about the people. Before, there's been so much focus on the process and not on the people. All right. So realize that agility is a mindset, not a framework. Is a mindset, the framework only helps us to implement. So if you focus on the framework and not on the mindset, you realize that you start convincing people the reason. You know, this is part of our agile process. We must do daily stand-up. We must do a retrospective. If we don't do review, we are not doing agile. That's where you're going to focus. But if you know it's a mindset, you realize that, okay, let's think for a minute. Why do we even need to have a review? What if we take out the review completely? It means we don't have an opportunity for our customer to give us feedback. So we're not customer-centric, right? What if we take a retrospective out? We're not improving. So it's about the thinking. What if we take a daily stand-up out? We're not inspecting. We're not trying to understand what we're doing. What if we take a planning out? Then what are we going to be working on if we don't plan? So you realize that it's not about a framework. It's the mindset that's behind the framework. So for us to be effectively become agile, we need to give, leave, uh, leverage our power to the team. Why? Because agile is about delivering in small things. We need to work in small batches, aim for small things, perform work in single piece of flow. We're going to come to that work in short circle, value software, soft ski. Soft ski is very important for you as a Scrum Master. Monitor depth closely, be brave enough to experiment and fail. All right, so before Agile came in, what was there before? We had what we call the traditional way, which many people know them as waterfall. So traditional way, it's not that things were being done, the, the, the design process or the software development circle was being done differently. Now, what changes in the whole process is just the fact that we're moving from a linear way of doing things into a circular way of doing things. And when something is circle, what's happening? We are constantly reviewing over and over again. When it's linear, what's happening? When it's over, it's over. Unless we go on the archives, there's definitely nothing we are learning. So Agile, which is a new shift from the traditional way where we just deliver, 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 and we're done, to a centric way of thinking where we pay attention to our customer. Let's do some practical example here. I love to use a ladies because um, uh, uh, they have a very powerful mindset. And 
they're, they're agile by nature, right? The mind can change at every moment. Now, let's say that a lady's planning a wedding in 2023, January 2023, and now they have two options. You want to order this beautiful wedding gown from China, and then they give you two options. Okay, uh, we bring a catalog to you, right? You pick, you customize everything that you need, and then you place your order. Okay, we deliver it to you uh, two days before your wedding. Any change that you make is going to cost you more money, All right? Then the same dress, the same deadline. It's okay, look, we got your order in. But if you go online and see something beautiful, call us. We'll make a change. If you change your mind in the middle of the wedding and want us to ask something, call us. We're still going to add it. Which one are we going to pick? The one that's open to our change, right? Because by default, we're constantly changing. So the value of Agile is that it gives so much power to the client and the client can pay for, can really enjoy for, uh, the value of what it needs. So the reason why Scrum is not going away is because it's taking power away from the uh, uh, companies and giving it to those who are paying for the value. Before, let's say uh, if you pay for a software, and you write your requirement, when it comes, you need to take it that way. They just go through the document and show you what you, you, you recorded down. Any changes to your cost, they don't care. Now, we have an opportunity where we can say, hey, look, call you overnight and ask you to change something, and it happened. So why would it go away? So it's still just at a very early phase. I had uh, someone that called me, and their company, they are launching 28 Scrum Masters position, like open, which means that they've not even started. I was talking to someone yesterday, um, the government of San Antonio is transforming all their IT uh, uh, department into Agile. So a lot of, this is, it's a very big shift. And, and, and Agile is not just about Scrum. There's so many deeper levels you can go in, which we're going to talk about them. So it's about we planning. And why are we planning? Because we need to be able to make decisions based on facts, based on data. Why? Because we need to focus on the work and not on the workers. Why? Because we need to build in quality. Why? Because we want to frequently deliver quality to our client. Why? Because if we deliver frequently, we're going to have feedback that will help us improve. And that is going to help us define what we need to continue planning ahead. All of this is because of customer need. Right here, there's no customer. It's about us building the product. You want uh, an Android iOS system, we do it. That's your iOS system. That's what you order for. Right here, you want an iOS system, I'm going to have a conversation with you. Who is using it? I keep this than for using it. Uh, what's going to happen if it doesn't work? Now we can pay very close attention and we can deliver a lot of value. When we talk about Agile, it's not just about Scrum and Safe. There's so many Agile framework. Krista, Kanban, Extreme Programming, Future Driven, Behavior Driven, uh, Less, so many. So don't ever think it's only Scrum and Safe. No, uh, there's so many. And so many are still coming up. Remember, Agile is a mindset, which means it's just a way of thinking. And people are readapting the way of, 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 of thinking. So some of the practices we're going to come through include time boxing, stories, daily stand-up, frequent demos, test driven, information radiator, retrospective, continuous improvement. We're going to, we're going to uh, uh, talk about these subsequently. All right. Let's do this and, and let's take... Uh, a break here before we come back and talk about the Agile Manifesto. There are five levels of Agile planning. 
when they say agile, which is what I think is not part of the uh, 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 the curriculum, but it's going to be part of every part of your interview. So pay very close attention to this. Now, as a Scrum Master, understanding the different level of planning that goes on within the Scrum team is going to help you. Most often, a lot of people end here. They don't know what happened outside the daily stand-up and spring planning and spring review. When you talk about release planning, product roadmap, product vision, we are lost. But if you understand that, for us to be able to have iteration, which are spring, we need to first of all have release planning. And for release planning to happen, we need to have a roadmap. And for a roadmap to exist, we need to have a product vision. It helps you to understand what your role will be in any of this process. So what is the role of a Scrum Master in product vision, in product roadmap, in release planning, in spring planning or iteration planning in the daily stand-up? Right, when you look to the right, there are a couple of definitions of what is happening within the space. Right here, it says, we're focusing on what did I do yesterday? What will I do today? And do I have any impediment? That's what the day focus on getting on understand specifically. A sprint or iteration, which is a two week circle, a one week circle, a three week circle, maximum one month recommended. One of the things you're going to learn, or which you're going to hear me say a lot when we're answering questions about Scrum, is the fact that whenever you ask a question about Scrum, you want to say that. In my previous working environment, this is what used to happen. Why is it very important to say that every environment customized Scrum uniquely? You might be a Scrum master working for organization B and working on organization C. All of us are practicing safe, but we're doing it different way. All right. When I say different way, let's say that uh you might be having a three-week spring. I'm having a two-week spring. All right. You might be having, let's say, a situation where the BA is the one writing your story. I'm having a situation where the Scrum Master is the one writing the story. Another person might be having a situation where the PO is the one writing the story. Another person will be having a situation where the product manager is the one writing the stories. Another person will be having a situation where the third leak is the one writing the story and facilitating. So it's very diverse. So when you understand this, and when, when you situate your own learning to your environment, you are very correct for someone that understands Agile. So planning level, we're talking about story, stacks, definition of done, level of effort, commitment. We're going to look into that. Uh, the release planning, iteration, team capacity, story, priority, size, estimation. This Now, let me talk a bit about release planning here. Um, but even looking at this diagram, I think it helps you to kind of grab every concept. When we talk about a product roadmap, it simply means if you're heading to New York, right, there's a map. You have where you need to stop to take uh, food. You have where you need to stop to go to the restroom. You have where you need to stop to take lunch. So a product roadmap simply means that what are the different things or what are the different uh, major things that we need to do by the start to the finish of the product. And release planning just simply means that at what specific time is each of these futures that we plan will be executed or we will be going out. The vision is what guides the product roadmap. The vision is the bigger picture. If we don't have a plan that we're going to New York, there's no need to get a roadmap to go to New York, right? If we don't start going to New York, there's no need to start talking about where to stop to buy gas, to use the restroom, maybe to rent a hotel, which are like the different releases that are going to happen along the way. Okay, so that was our first 
one hour. So let's take a break. Uh, our seven minutes break. It's six minutes after six o'clock my time. So look at your time. We are going to come back at 13 minutes past the top of the hour. So you can keep your question. When we come back, you can ask your question. I'll take question before we move ahead. We start where we're looking at the five different levels of planning and why we should understand the different levels of planning. And I did mention the fact that the Scrum Master it's more concentrated on on at this level. Um, and sometimes we don't kind of look back here, which is the reason why sometimes when they ask you what is the rule of Scrum Master and resist planning or have you ever created a product roadmap we kind of create a loss right but this is how um we all align from the vision the product roadmap the release uh planning and then iteration which is print planning then daily, uh, daily planning okay now the agile manifesto before we even talk about agile how did agile come into place a group of people were having their phone somewhere and they decided that, oh, look, we need to change the way software has been delivered. And they started having lunch and talking and they came up with what we call the Agile Manifesto today. So the Agile Manifesto are just a set of values which they consider in the look at the way what was being done and then they try to more or less suggest how we can do things better. They said, yeah, we know that we have been focusing so much of our processes and tools, but we want to focus more on individual interaction. What about the people that are using the processes and tools? They're very important, right? So we know that we want to document every part. We want to write down contracts. We want to do everything to show that we have a working way. What about we focus on if it's working? Now you're going to come across the word a working software over and over again. What does it mean? It simply means that a part of the product that can be independently tested. If I'm building this phone and I finish building the camera, if the camera can be tested and demonstrated that it has the capacity we are looking for, that's a working software. The phone is not yet complete, but we have built the camera. So the camera is a working software. So every increment that can be tested and validated that, yes, we can use this is a working software. All right. Now we we'll look at customer collaboration over contract negotiation, responding to change over following plan. So why Agile folk pay so much attention to the lab? They are not acknowledged, they are not dismissing the fact that this aspect of the right are not important. They just say we feel like if we pay attention on this, we're going to have so much value. And we all saw this. Why is Scrum or Agile booming now? Because COVID came and just gave them more reason to believe in the dream, right? We could no longer go to offices and sign contract. It was more about negotiating with people. Even those who are uh, in the healthcare sector, you realize that even negotiating with people, if you don't really have a good relationship with them, it's going to be a no. So they start understanding, wow, it's time we start focusing on relationship. People started understanding that their money cannot do any stuff. It's about people. It's not about processes and about stuff. So which is the reason why there is a very big shift in the market into the agile. Why? It's, a, it's what we call the new normal. So you're going to see constantly a lot of companies adopting agile, not only here. Tomorrow, I will present a talk in one of the companies in Nigeria, which uh, they want to adopt Agile and they want me to give them a talk about what it takes to be Agile. 
So it's definitely the market is just starting. My advice for anyone getting into the agile space is that you want to give yourself some serious goals. If not, you're going to be kicked out in less than no time because university will start offering bachelors in Scrum very soon and in agile very soon. Yes. So now those who now go to school and have a bachelor in agile and other stuff, they come and they beat you out. So you want to make sure that you're leveraging those certification. You're going to agile coaching. You're going to enterprise coaching. So that by the time they, they're filling the space down, you're filling the space up. So that should be your thinking. And now the thinking is also going to be really, really helpful for you. One of the wrong thinking you don't want to have is that think about, I need a job. No, look beyond the job. Think about a career in Agile. A career in Agile is something that you cannot beat it. Now, when you do Agile beyond the Scrum level, when you go at the program consultant level, you realize that even at the level of the government or the budgeting at the level of how the parliaments are run and other stuff are being administered what we call lean budget. So there's the safe for governance and the special people call SPCT, safe program consultant that work with the government. They're like, they like public accountant. But then the government don't like to, because they don't want to budget item by item. They use value stream. And Agile estimate your budget based on value stream. So the reason why you're going to have sale for governor, government, which I'm going to show you soon, is a whole massive stuff on your own. You can decide to even work as a lean portfolio manager where you're only talking with CEO, trying to understand what they're doing and helping them in strategies. So there's so many stuff you can do in that space. And now after the four values, the 12 agile principle, you're not recommended to know them by heart, but then when you understand the principle, it gives you more idea to understand why we are doing Scrum. So just looking at the headline, is gonna be more than enough. We're looking forward to satisfy our clients. We're looking forward to build trust. We're looking forward to welcome change requirement, even at the middle. We're looking forward to deliver working software frequently. We're looking forward to business people and developers should cooperate. We're looking forward for cooperation. We're looking forward to maintain a constant time and space. We're looking forward to become more effective. We're looking forward to become self-organized. We're looking forward to make things very simple and not complicated. We're looking forward to excellence. We're looking forward face-to-face -face conversation. This is going to be a certification uh, question. And the question is going to ask you like, um, which Agile manifesto or support PI planning? No, PI planning, which we're going to look at, look at it tomorrow. It's a two days event where it's a face-to-face. -face. So uh, Agile manifesto number six, sub, uh, support PI planning. The most efficient and effective method of converging information is face-to-face. All right, face to face, you get the real reaction. If someone is very upset with you, they give you a punch. So you get the real feeling. Over the computer, you can't do anything much apart from just uh, maybe get frustrated at your own end. So they say, oh, when it's face to face, there's that feeling, there's that collaboration. We can see people more uh, uh, emotional. All right, so what are the basics, Scrum basics? Okay, when we talk about Scrum, Scrum is one of the way to do Agile. Safe is another way to do Agile. Kanban is another way to do Agile. Uh, less is another way to do Agile. SP programming, uh, extreme programs is another way to do Agile. The one I recommend you know are going to be Scrum, Safe, and Kanban. If you know these three, you're good. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about them a bit. Now, they are how many pillars of Scrum? We have three pillars, transparency, inspection, and adaptation, right? So we have three pillars and we have five values. And the five values, focus, openness, respect, commitment, courage, and then when we talk about the development team, uh, which are developer, we're talking about a team that's cross-functional. The word cross-functional 
Tuna simply means that we have everything we need across the team to do the work that we need to do. Self-organized means that we cannot say because X, Y, Z is not here, we cannot come there, right? What is the use of this value? Now, sometimes we neglect a lot these uh, five values. These five values are going to help you. Most of the situational questions come from these five values. What happens if your team is constantly not meeting up with your daily goals and you try to, there's no focus. They're not focusing on, on, on focusing on what is the problem. They are not focusing on, on the amount of work that they can take. So you have most of those challenges that might be coming up. Now, openness. What happens if you, uh, uh, you keep, keep having conflicts in your team? Your team member are not open. If someone is open, what happens? If they're being disturbed because of something, they're going to tell you, hey, you know what? I don't like this. Respect. Some people feel like, oh, you're not qualified to be part of this team and they don't look at you. So these are the values we want to incorporate. Commitment. Uh, we're not committed to do the work. We plan it and like, oh, I don't care if the work is done or not. Courage. You need to be courageous to tell your management, to tell whosoever you're working with, this is not the right thing to do. All right. So now let's look at, uh, we're looking at three framework, which is why I want to bring a bit of comparison for you to understand who is which one is what. So you're going to hear a lot about, have you used Kanban before? A lot about Kanban. So I'm going to talk about Scrum. So Scrum is the framework used in software development. And Kanban, it's a lean manufacturing. Now lean, lean is borrowed from Six Sigma. Six Sigma, one of my students went for an interview and the question they asked her was, how do you use Six Sigma during your Scrum? <laughs> like, and she was very confused. So sometimes, Interviewers can be very, very mean and just throw you up. It's just what they wanted to say, like, how do you continuously improve? Six Sigma is about continuous improvement or lean. You're going to hear about lean or Six Sigma. It's about improvement. How can we improve the situation? Yeah. So, Kanban, which is Kanban, is more of visualization. And if you have a question, please don't hesitate to raise your hand up and ask me your question. Please, if you have a question, stop me and we want to answer your question. Yes, Jesse, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Question, is it yes. Lean also part of Agile or is it Agile that came from Lean? Uh, Lean is part of Agile and Agile is part of Lean. So they're two independent systems. Lean comes from, uh, Lean is a continuous improvement. Is it? If you uh, heard about Toyota, about uh, most of this company that really started building really, really good car, they started focusing on smaller improvement, which is called Lean. Like they want to look at how can we improve? So they, they track the processes and they look at how they can improve. So before uh, Agile even came into play in the early 20, Lean already existed. I hope that answered your question. Okay, perfect. So um, now Kanban Lean Manufacturer. Now, the origin why Kanban is in manufacturing is because we want to be able to, it's about visualization. If Lean was like, uh, we're implementing a project, we want everyone to put what they're doing on the board, we want to see how this is moving so that we know where we're having a delay, let the process be transforming, let everyone know exactly what is happening. We want to monitor work and see how it's going. We want to have a better overview of what's going on. So the ideology is Scrum stuff complex problem. Why do they bring valuable product? Why Kanban used to visualize uh, visuals to improve work flow and processes? 
And then when we talk about uh, the practices, uh, Scrum, we talk about screen planning, screen uh, daily Scrum, screen review, screen retrospective. In Kanban, we're gonna be talking about visualize the flow of work, limit work in progress, manage flow, make processes, policy explicit, implement feedback loops, improve experiment. So you constantly be asked, oh, have you used uh, Kanban before? What are the levels in which you have used Kanban? Now Kanban, if you work in a safe environment, will be mostly used at a program and a portfolio level. Why? Because when you're building a future um, at a team level, they can track to see how that future is being completed. They can just have a bot where they put the futures and as feedback comes from the team, they can look at how it's been improved. All right, what are the roles? Product owner, Scrum Master, development team, what are the roles in the Kanban? No former role in Kanban. So, but then if, if a Scrum Master can still manage his Scrum Band team, but they're not former role. Okay, let's look at the difference between Scrum and SAFE. Now we're getting close into SAFE, right? But you also realize that we've also talked about so many stuff about Scrum. Scrum, deal with small co-located cross-functional team. Safe deal with what? Big multi-geographical team. They do the same thing, just the scope is different. Scrum is adopted by agile team, adopted by whole enterprise, enterprise as a whole, not just a team. So that's why we're gonna, when we learn about PI planning tomorrow, you realize that even the business people are leadership, they're coming together to plan. So safe is the more bigger, then it's more bigger. Scrum talks about team. The middle management plays no role in Scrum. It's just about Scrum Master, then maybe your manager. But right here, right to the program levels, you're gonna have people that are gonna come in and contribute to what you're doing. All right, basic construct is the team. Basic construct is the agile release train. We'll learn more about agile release train. You can just note, note it. Agile release train is the entire team working, um, the entire team implementing a PI. So PI means program increment planning, which we're gonna learn the term. It's a term that you need to know not just know it, know how the event is being completed, executed, it's a very important uh, event in, in SAFE. Scrum misses out various essential aspects. We save all possible futures and aspects of the organization can be, you see that. All right, so when we look at the appellations, when we look at the appellations, um, All right, so when we look at appellation, yes, uh, I was just seeing to see if I have questions on the comment box. Yes, uh, Jira dashboard is borrowed from Kanban. <laughs> we can say that, yes, that's a Kanban view. That's, that's right. Uh, let me go ahead and unmute you, sir. Yes, please. Can I see the previous um slide? Oh, so much. Yes. You have a question about that? Okay. Perfect. Everybody okay? Someone have a question? 
We good? Yes, yes, no, no. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, Doc. Yeah, please. I uh, want you to throw more light on a lean manufacturer and how it works with Canva. Okay, lean, it's, it's an, you can say it, uh, lean simply means we're continuously improving, right? Lean manufacturing implemented a process where we want to visualize what is the progress. We want to pay attention on how work is happening. So in most of the cases in lean manufacturing, you're going to see a lot of bots on the wall where we are able to visualize and make sure that we're not taking a whole lot. We're taking small batches and moving ahead, completing it. Kanban is just helping us to visualize. Now that process is, is, is kind of, uh, of it. So you can say that um, you, you have a Kanban team and you have a Kanban board. So a Kanban team is a team that use the lean manufacturing approach to deliver the work, right? They want to oh. just visualize what is happening, build the work to the end. There are no specific, uh, there are no specific limitations that like we need to build in circle. We need to do the not so much protocol there. Thank you. All right. Then one of the difference you're also going to see between safe and scrum is the, is the terms. In, in safe, when we talk about spring, we're going to be talking about, I, instead of talking on uh, spring, you'll be hearing integration. It means the same thing. They do right. the same thing. Yes, yes. yes, they do they do the same thing. When they talk about spring review and iteration review, it means the same thing. There's no difference in what is being done there. When we talk about spring retrospective and iteration retrospective, what just changed is just in safe light to use iteration and scrum right to use spring. Spring go, iteration go, spring backlog, iteration backlog, daily scrum, daily stand up, increment, team increment, the scrum team, the agile team. So those are just like synonyms. The difference when you see iteration, you start understanding that, oh, it's a safe environment. And what is the major difference between safe and scrum? Again, someone know that. The major difference is same as Chrome. Uh, Jesse, you have a question? I can I can uh, answer. I, I don't know if my answer will be correct. The okay. major difference between safe and Scrum is that uh, safe it's uh, at a scale. Uh, it's like uh, implemented at a scale level, and Scrum on a team level working on a product. Uh, now I will go with my question: is uh, with those uh, sprint planning and then iteration planning. So during one PI, we will have both sprint planning on the, at, the, at the team level and then iteration plan, not, not iteration planning, but let's take, let's take for example, uh, daily scrum. So yeah. every day your team will have daily scrum and then the whole safe team will have also the daily scrum. Mm, okay, we're going to come to that. That's a bit complicated. But um, right here, right? In place of daily scrum, a safe team will call it daily stand-up, but they will still do the same thing, like what they do in daily uh, scrum. What they did yesterday, what you're working on today, and the rest. All right. Uh, I think I saw many hands up. Uh, Jeremiah, I saw your hand up. Oh, yeah. I wanted yeah. to answer that question. Okay, um, go ahead. Yeah, I believe the major difference, as you mentioned, is um, safe is for the 
team, the, the, the agile team, while safe um, is for the organization as a whole. So when it comes to the people attending the meetings, you'll see a lot of cross, um, you mentioned that SAFE is regarding a bunch of different meetings, different meet, um, groups um, that are geologically, I believe you, you used the word there, but basically people meeting all over multiple teams or so the teams are a lot larger versus Scrum is just the specific team, usually a lot smaller, under 10 people or so. So uh -huh. size is the biggest difference. And yeah, the collaboration of people who work working with is a bit different. Yeah. Okay. In a way, in kind of a simple way, Scrum, um, it's more with the smaller and uh, safe go with the more bigger framework. All right. Another, okay, Mr. Annex, go ahead. I just wanted to add that. Uh, the major difference between Scrum and SAFE is at the level of uh, PI planning, which is uh, practice in SAFE. So with SAFE, uh, work is planned by PI. There is a, a, a quarter, work is planned quarterly, while Scrum uh, work is planned in uh, maybe two weeks sure. sprint. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So the plan is the scope, generally the scope at which the scope of operation is one major difference in every aspect. Planning, the scope is more bigger. Team-wise, the scope is more bigger. Uh, cutting across, the, all, all, all safe cuts across all the component in the organization, it's more bigger. Okay, perfect. Let's get a bit more down. All right, so, um, looking at the setup of an agile or scrum environment, all right, how does the scrum environment function? This is a scrum team or an agile team, the same thing. We have the scrum master. So the scrum master manages the process and remove impediment. We have the product owner. The product owner is talking to the business owner, to the end user and collecting every information that the team need to develop the work that they need to develop. In a team, we have developers, we have QA, we have uh, architect and we have business analysts. This is, I would say, it's how a typical team will look like, but it's not always the same. You can have a team that are just developers, no QA, no test, no, no business analyst. You can have a team that have QA the same as the tester, that have a QA, uh, a tech lead, and a business analyst. You can have a team that just have developer and business analyst, so the team can be really diverse depending on the product that you're building, right? So it can be very diverse. Okay, now still looking at the process, what is happening when this is kind of overview, we're still gonna go through this all detailly, so don't bother if you don't understand anything here. Um, so Ernest, your hand is still up. Do you still have another question? Yeah, very quick question. Have you, uh, just talking about your personal experience, have you come across a team where Scrum Master also does development work? Yes. I have. The Scrum Master was also a developer. That's that's when when they say we're looking for a technical Scrum Master. That's what they're looking for. All right, perfect. So um, we have the product owner, as we saw earlier, is the one. Oh my God. Hi, um, sorry, I want to take you back to the Scrum team. Yeah. Did you say um, the business owner speaks to the product owner 
then the product owner to the end user and the domain. So where did the Scrum Master, what's his own um, job in this, um, if the business owner goes straight to the product owner? Yeah, so uh, in terms, so the product owner collect all requirements. The business owner should not come to the Scrum Master, right? Now, the Scrum Master focus on, first of all, the number one role of the Scrum Master is to protect his team, right? The only reason the Scrum Master will go to the business owner if he realizes that the business owner is putting so much pressure on the team. Then he will go to him and say, Mr. CEO, see, this action like this is not helping our team. Can we work on something? He's not going to him to collect requirement or to collect anything that needs to do with work. It's collected by the PO and brought to the team. If the end user is putting so much pressure on the product owner and the product owner is feeling overwhelmed because the scrum master is a coach and have many uh, more facility, they come and say, Mr. End user, look, this thing you're doing is killing my PO and my PO is putting all the frustration on the team. Can we have a conversation and talk about this? Is that clear enough? Yes, yes, okay, perfect. All right, I need to I need to wrap up with this. Um, yes, sir. Yes, um, I just wanted to um, clarify one thing. Uh, in the the team, you said the scrum master, of course, protects the team. In the yeah. team, that development team, which uh, oh yeah, you make mention that it could be just filled with developers. Yeah. Um. So. How about the testers? Uh, does it mean a developer will also play the role of the tester or any developer can play any other roles if they are all full of developers? Okay. In most of the cases, the testing environment might be a unique environment on its own. And in some cases, the testing is automated. Immediately the developer finishes the story running through the DevOps system, automation or testing start completely. If it fails, it comes back to the team. Mm. Yes. Uh, Coach Edwin, you wanna add something? Go ahead and unmute you, sir. I mean, I just had a minor a minor contribution. Uh, I mean, sometimes you agree with me that uh, as a Scrum Master, your biggest ally in your team is your PO. Yeah. So yeah. So most of the time, even before reaching to the business owners or the end users, it's always good, you know, to coach your product owner. If they're actually putting pressure on the team, then your very first person to run to is your product owner. Coach your product owner. Let him or her know what impact that pressure, the pressure we are getting from the business owners, the end users. Yep. What pressure? What are the effects? The impacts of that pressure on the team. Mm -hmm. So you only go to the business owners only if your interaction with the product owner has actually yielded almost no fruit. And then at that level, you can reach out to your business owners. That's very correct. Okay. Um, Nanga. Yeah, so on a team that has just developers and um, you said we do automatic testing. So in those type of teams, and if you're answering a question, you don't say that, you did manual testing. It's always going to be an autom automated testing, right? I don't okay. know if my question is clear. If you do manual testing, then you have a test on your team, right? Okay. Or, as I just said, you might have a separate team that does testing. For instance, in the organization, they might have what's called shared services. So they might have about six different teams in that organization and there are only three testers. So they don't want to assign those testers into like one team, two team. So they create them as shared services. So when you want something to be tested, what happened? You deploy it to the testing environment. <laughs> and then 
you do the testing and deploy it back to your team or the, and then you move to the next phase. Yeah. Okay. But in, 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 it is advisable if your testing system is not automated that you you have a tester in your team, right? You want to definitely ab advise that. Okay. Thank yeah. you. All right. Uh, yes, Jesse. Quick question about DevOps, but if it's not pertinent, we can maybe you're going to speak up about that later. You say yeah. that uh, automatic tests, the developer will run that on DevOps. Uh, is it uh, like, is it one of, is it like Scrum, Kanban? Is it one of, uh, is it an agile uh, framework or methodology? Oh, it's just like an environment when where developers are going to put their tests and do their automatic tests. It's an environment. It's an environment where uh, when normally when we learn more about iteration and we look at the process on how uh, the definition of done, what are the different phases where the story is going to move? You realize that for a story to get to done, you need to pass through several processes. When you get to a particular process where a test needs to be automated, uh, a test needs to be done, we can automate that. So uh, we, that's, that's going to be building a DevOps pipeline. So for your organization to, to, to automate, they need to have a very strong DevOps team that does all the automation. All right, perfect. So let's move ahead. So we're talking about the Scrum processes and more on the different uh, aspect of uh, the higher level. We're still going to revisit this again, over and over again. We have the product owner. And what do we say the product owner is? The product owner is that person who's stuck to the stakeholder, collect all the requirements, put them in the backlog. Now this is pure Scrum. When we go to safe, we're going to see that it's a bit different when we talk about PI planning and how work is done in safe. Now, the product owner collects everything and put in the backlog. So the product owner owns the backlog because he's the one collecting the requirement and putting in the backlog. Now, the Scrum Master help in facilitate the planning in collaboration with the PO and they have what? A spring backlog during spring meeting. And all of these, after the spring meeting uh, backlog we have, we have our daily scrum up to the last day. And then uh, we have our spring review and retrospective when the work that we completed is being deployed to the production environment. Okay. So still more or less looking at this in a bigger way. Um, Key important role, which are very important. The PO, the Scrum Master, who facilitate the Scrum event, the development team, and the stakeholder. Who is a stakeholder? This is a concept that we most often get it wrong. Stakeholder doesn't mean the end user, doesn't mean someone out of the team. In most of the cases, about 80 to 90%, the stakeholder you talk to are going to be within the organization, the manager, the tech lead, and every other person that's supervising that project. It's like we've been your stakeholder. In very rare cases, you're going to have like really access to the direct client. Yeah. So what we have here is how do work even get for us to start planning? We have the, pro uh, the, the project vision or the product vision with about what we want to build. Then the product vision are breaking into what is called epics. Epics are more like futures, are more like the big things we want to do. And then from the epic level, we break it down to story level. You see right here, we had four major milestones or four major futures. It's been broken down to many futures. And then we plan it into our backlog and then we implement it during our daily school, uh, we we'll do our retrospective, we we'll do our review retrospective, right? So along the line, what is happening as you are implementing, there are going to be challenges. <laughs> Impediments are challenges. That's what it means. What are the challenges you have 
while implementing? What are some of the impediments? So next time when you say I manage impediment, understand that impediments are just issues that come up that are going to retard you from completing your work. Now the output, we have the bend down chart. Bend down chart simply show you how good or bad your team is. We have the uh, product retrospective meeting. Um, project retrospective meeting is more on, this is different from team retrospective. This one is at a higher level where uh, people at the level of managers uh, sit and look at how the work is doing in general. So uh, let's complete this last part before we go into lesson two. Agile, the agile team in a safe enterprise. Now we want to move a bit from Scrum to safe. Now, as there are three pillars in Scrum, there are four core values in safe. So you want to pay attention to these four core values in safe. One of the things you're going to notice about safe is that safe is not just all about agility. Safe is also about built-in value. They're going to use lean. You're going to see the, the concept lean manufacturing, lean manufacturing. Lean simply means continuous improvement. So safe is going to use more of agile concept and lean manufacturing concept to deliver the product. And there are 10 uh, 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 safe um, principles. You don't need to know them by heart. You just need to understand them from high level perspective. Take an economic view, apply system thinking, uh, assume variability, preserve option, view incrementally, based on milestone, based milestone on objective, visualize and limit work in progress, apply cadence, unlock intrinsic motivation of knowledge worker, decentralized decision making, organize around value organized around value. This is also what I wanted to pay very close attention on. It's organized around value. Anga, your hand is still up. Is it a new hand or the previous hand? Okay, perfect. So you want to kind of have just a very high level of this. Now, what this simply means is that when we're thinking about safe, since we're, we should think about the entire organization, economic view, then we think about a system that we can use to implement what we want to implement. Now we want to assume that things can change very fast and it's very possible for them to change very fast. And that is why we don't want to be, uh, take let's say two years to build something before we present. We want to present in increments so that if there's any change, we can make a change uh, on time. We want to limit so much, uh, we want to make sure that we focus on our milestone. We want to limit so what much work in progress Cadence, synchronization. Cadence simply means that we want to build in alignment and make sure that the increment that we're building, we're putting them together. Now, this is where you come in as a Scrum Master, very powerful. Unlock intrinsic motivation of knowledge worker. What this simply means is that you are the main person to motivate your team. How do you motivate your team? There's nothing special you do. Just be there for them. Just be there for them. So that's all you need to do. All right. So we're going to start with starting learning safe now. Done. It's very simple. Now, safe takes what? We, we did said that. Safe takes an economic view, which means that we are looking at the entire organization. When we're looking at the entire organization, an organization can be divided into three levels. Portfolio is where decisions are made, the top people, right? The CEOs and the board members, they call the portfolio. And then you have like managing directors and manage, uh, program manager, they are the program level. Then you come here and you have like uh, scrum master, developer, product owner, they are the team level. Every increment that is delivered is based on the team level, which means that no matter how planning goes up at the program level, if the, 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 the knowledge worker don't agree to do the work, then we are wasting our time. 
So, what are we seeing right up here? The bigger picture is, here you have what we call a portfolio backlog. Right, a backlog is just a bank of idea. Here we have what is called a program backlog, program bank of idea or list of to do. Here we have what we call the team backlog are the thing that we need to do. But what we're gonna be paying so much attention on is on this two level. How do we interact with this two level? This is where we wanna pay so much attention on coming forth. Okay. See the same thing explained in a different way. This is what I spoke about earlier that we have lean for government. So the government is applying so much of this value into their own system, which is one of the reasons we should really focus on. I already explained all this. I'm not going to go back to it. Now let's look at some of the basic terms within the agile thinking or agile way. What's an agile team? An agile team is a cross-functional, self-organized entity that can define, view, test, and where applicable, deploy increment of value, optimize for communication and deliver and delivery of value. Delivery value every two weeks, contain two specialized specialty roles, scrum master and product owner. All right, now we have different things. One of the things you're gonna see is that in stay, that's what we call, we pay so much attention on cadence. Cadence means that all the different teams must start building their work together and stop at the same time so that we can all review and, and match all our product at the same time. Remember safe is many teams working on one product, right? Responsibility of an agile team, five to 11 team members. So each Scrum team or Agile team is recommended to be five to 11 members. Create and define story and accepting criteria. We're gonna look at what the story is for accepting criteria, you don't bother about that. Define, view, test, and deploy story. This is what we call SLDC, Software Development Lifecycle. Define, view, test, and deploy story. View quality in each increment of the solution. Develop and commit to the PI objective and iteration goal. Now, looking at specifically the role of a Scrum Master, a Scrum Master doesn't really do much. Um, coaches the Agile team in self-organizing, help the team focus on creating increment of value each iteration. Okay, pause here. You come across a question frequently like, how will we know that a story is vertically sliced in a backlog? Or what is vertical story sliding? What this simply means is that that story in the backlog is contributing to the increment that will be released at the end of that spring. Facilitate the removal of impediment to the team uh, progress. Ensure that all team events take place, are productive and kept within the time box. So those are some of the roles. Product owner, contribute to the vision and roadmap. Act as uh, the customer for the team question. Create clearly, communi communicate and accept story. Prioritize the team backlog. Now, they say nothing beats the agile team. Teams are use, can, use Scrum and Kanban for team agility. Kanban is just simply means we're making it visual like what you're seeing here. And they apply view in quality for technical agility. We're building code. We want to make sure that all our code have quality. View in quality practices. View in quality practices, lean and agile principles and practices. They help you to improve view in quality practices. Behavior driven development. Behavior driven development, I want to explain it in a very layman uh, way, looking, doing it. Now, uh, if you have like a smoke alarm in your house, what happened when the smoke start going up? The alarm, right? That's a behavior driven. If you have uh, maybe face recognition on your phone, immediately you pick it up, what happened? Automatically, when you get to your passcode, your 
just because your face is there, your face unlock it. Those are behavior driven uh, development. You also have TDD, test driven, just making sure it's passing the test, extreme programming, just a way of coding, right? code quality, design pattern, practice, agile modeling. Also looking at teams, a self-organizing, self-managed team comprised of an agile, comprised of agile teams operate on common principles. Deliver working tested fully increment every two weeks. One of the things you will notice about Scrum teams is that most often they emphasize on the deliver tested working. Why are we focusing on tested working? Because we're focusing on delivering quality. We want to make sure everything is tested. Have common iteration, learn, and start and end it. I already spoke in that. Plan your work at periodic, larger, face-to-face -face PI planning. Develop on cadence, release on demand. Develop on cadence, release on demand. Someone might ask you, oh, what was your normal, what was your release uh, calendar on? Uh, it can be any length. It just depends on when we want to deliver this different product. So. Going a bit unsafe, we're going to be talking a lot on Agile Release Train. Agile Release Train is a unit that helps in executing the PI circle. And within the PI circle, we have all our iteration, which iteration seems to mean sprint. So the Agile Release Train is an organization of five to 12 teams, averaging 150. Average 50 to 125 individuals. Synchronize on common cadence, a PI program or program increment. Align to a common vision via single product backlog. Now, see here, they don't say uh, product backlog, they say program. So program backlog is where we still having futures that are now taken by the team and broken down into story. We'll get into team broken down into stories and all of that tomorrow. So some of the events you want to pay attention right here, it's on um, the different events that are major to uh, the Agile release train. We're going to be talking about PI planning, uh, RRT scene, system demo, inspect and adapt, and the duration in which this is going to take place. So we're going to be discussing all of that in a short while. So that was lesson one completed. And let me see how many questions we have. And after that, we're going to take a 15 minutes break and come back for lesson two. Questions? I'm going to allow everyone to unmute themselves for any question. Yes, Mr. Ernest, go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, uh, my question has to do with uh, the flexibility of Agile, which uh, is noticed in, in, so in many aspects, like, uh, maybe having to change or bring in a new story because of uh, its value to replace another one which is pushed back to the upcoming sprints and so on. But I have a problem with uh, the logic behind time, time box events. Mm. Like there's a lot of emphasis on time boxing and I see that to be very, very uh, rigid. Yeah. So why why that rigidity when this when this methodology is all about flexibility? All right, if we don't time box, there's a tendency that we're gonna lose focus. Time control everything. So if we don't set time, uh, we look we 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 might go outside of what is needed so it, it, it's still flexible right? that's why if you have a 15 minute meeting there's so many things coming up you have what is called parking lot you set time to discuss them for that if you have a spring planning and so many issues that are coming up that you cannot address you set 
uh, 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 retrospect. No, you said a backlog refinement meeting. So your backlog refinement meeting might not just happen only once. If you have a spring review and there's so many questions, you now set follow-up meetings with the people that have the questions. So if you have time flexibility, just that is well structured and organized. This one has two. Thanks. Yes, Mr. Ishmael, go ahead. Yes. Uh, have you have you ever find this um, um 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 due to experience? Have you find yourself find yourself in a situation wherein uh possibly the business analyst uh performing the role of a schoolmaster? Yes. So actually, how 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 is that going? going to be how is that going to be happening with the you know you as a school master um it's not going to affect your function as a school master because of late like i had an interview and they want me to do both role like a school master and a business analyst so yeah. i was a little bit confused and i thought maybe it's, it's going to be like too much for me yeah, so uh, in some of the cases where the business analyst is acting as a scrum master, for the team, uh, the scrum master is assigned to do something different. I've also had a situation where the scrum master doesn't even run any event. The events are run by the project, by the project manager. And the project manager only assign Scrum Master to do some specific work in there. I've had another situation where uh, the team is only comprised of the PO and the Scrum Master, and they just have a whole lot of backlog where they bring up I uh, items in there, and it's been executed by external people and they track them along, right? Which has uh, what reason why I said the environment is really, really different. Uh, across so so if you have to do the ba rule and the scrum master rule it might be that in that team the ba is not writing story right so the ba might simply just evaluate and make sure that all the business values and everything on the uh, uh futures and the project are all together and analyze them and move ahead so it might be different from the environment it, um, assume, assuming that maybe it might be that within the environment they may not have a uh, product or a PO. Yeah, then you yeah, need that's, to that's the way I look at. Yeah, that's the way I was looking at it. And maybe they might not have a they may not have a PO though. Then you need to write the stories. So we will work on story writing. Uh, I think is it tomorrow or after tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, the very last slide on that uh, presentation, you just flashed it. I thought it has some information. If you can just display it momentarily for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, this this is the last slide. Oh. Okay. Just more on the, what we have learned. Thank you. Yeah, it was more on the review. That's why I just watched it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's take a, um, we'll come back at 30 minutes past your time. So we have about 17 minutes break. And we'll come back, we'll do a one stretch and finish uh, the role of the Scrum Master. It's going to be more interesting because we'll, we'll be talking more about you uh, in, the next, in the next phase. All right, see everybody. Lesson two. <laughs>